My name is Bill Johnson, and I was in the Marine Corps in World War II. Uh, I ended up a second lieutenant uh, on Iwo Jima in the far Pacific, and I love the Marine Corps and its discipline, its honor, its patriotism, accountability, response, all the things that kids should learn at home or at church, and the Marine Corps beat it into you. As a 90, what is it, 91-year-old, I'll tell you the world has been changing. So I was a, a sophomore at the University of Texas, and Pearl Harbor was bombed, and there were 40 boys in the fraternity house uh, where I was living, and we all went down the Monday after that Sunday to join up. I went through various training things. I ended up in an engineering detachment at the University of Colorado, but there were so many Marine second lieutenant rifle platoon leaders killed on Saipan and Tinian uh, that they needed more for the coming invasion of Iwo Jima. Japanese planes used to uh, take off and harass the B-29s. Curtis May was bombing uh, Tokyo and Honshu. So uh, high command thought they would take Iwo and so we had artillery bombardments from the Air Force for 70 two days in a row. I was in the 27th Regiment, 1st Battalion, uh, and we were on the far side of the island. We went right below Suribachi, the, where they hung a flag up. And the Japanese were very efficient in their defense. They built wonderful fortifications. They would have a ledge, like a ledge across the creek here, and there would be a hole every so often coming out. And but when you looked in there, if you did, and it wasn't advisable, uh, there were tracks where these bigger guns could be wheeled into a hole, fire, and back up, get on a passageway and come out in another hole. But the biggest uh, ally the Japanese had was the beach. It was a black sand and you would go over your boot with uh, your first step in the sand. And so the beach was a bottleneck. They made a mistake of letting the first Marines get on shore before they came out of their holes and began killing them. But the first couple of waves had the better deal this time. My platoon was pretty well shot up. We had, uh, my captain was uh, shot the second time. Uh, our lieutenant colonel charge of the battalion was killed when a uh, mortar round landed in his jeep and all of our officers, they were pretty thin. The uh, fighting was uh, constant in, uh, it just went on and on. We had been told it wouldn't be but a few days and there were some people worn out, but the Marine Corps is a tough bunch and we had, we were well trained and so, Knowing that I was the leader of my platoon, uh, I took turns. We all we uh, hopscotched, you know, with certain men firing and the others moving and uh, zigzagging. And my wife loves me to tell a story about when I got shot. You don't run just straight ahead towards a tunnel that's shooting at you. So I was zigzagging and twisting and turning and. Uh, I got hit in this left hand, tore off a finger and ripped my sleeve all the way up to the elbow. 
but I had just twisted a little bit. And so the bullet was aimed at my heart and I twisted. But it was a hollow tip bullet and it blew a big hunk out of my hand. But I was alive and I thought about home. Uh, I thought if I die, my mother's gonna be terribly unhappy. After I was shot, uh, we had uh, no uh, corpsmen nearby at that time. Before Vietnam, there were no helicopters. And I think it was a couple of days before I was uh, able to leave. We eventually loaded up the people that had stomach and head wounds, the dangerous wounds. An uh, arm being out of pocket and so on was no big problem. But I ended up in uh, Guam in the hospital with an adverse reaction to a gangrene shot. I had gangrene in my hand by that time. And the uh, commandant of the Marine Corps, Vandergriff, had a son, a colonel. And he came by one day and this is in a hospital in Guam and said, Johnson? I said, yes, sir. He said, you feel like you're going to die with the results of the gas gangrene shot. And I said, I would like to. And he said, you'll live, but you're going to be uncomfortable a while. Hang in there and moved on. And that was the biggest boost. Here was a big man. A high-ranking officer telling a lowly second lieutenant to hang in there. He had been through the same thing. After a while in the hospital in Guam, uh, they finally announced they were going to ship us home. But coming home, we came to San Francisco in the middle of the night. We went under the Golden Gate Bridge, but our ship came alive. Everybody was pleased to be there. But the people were so welcoming, so happy to see us. Uh, they uh, bent over backwards. You couldn't buy a newspaper for a nickel. They would give you the paper. Uh, they were as generous as they could be wherever they were. Uh, that was the difference in the whole country fighting a war, the whole country won the war.